Lake Mead, low levels, obviously, but things are changing. Things are improving, but ever so slightly. Right now, Lake Mead's water storage is still historically low, only 45% of average. That's better than Lake Powell, which is 38% of average. We've had a lot of water across the western U.S. with these atmospheric river events. So where do we stand overall? That's coming up in today's Daily Shower. Matt Makins here. The drought monitor came out today, but still look, western U.S., we still have drought. We still have moderate to severe drought across the west, getting into extreme drought territory in parts of Nevada, Oregon, and Utah, as well as Montana. But what about this atmospheric river and the series of those events over the last three to four, five weeks? It's a lot of water, don't get me wrong. But from a long-term standpoint, it was just a minor dent in the deficits that we have had. Now, again, don't get me wrong. We've improved the drought across the West. All these green shades, that's where drought categories have improved. But we still remain in a drought, despite having so much water. How much are we in a deficit? Let's go back to about 2020. 2020 is when we were very low in drought. Then La Nina kicked in, and we've seen the drought really exponentially increase. Right now, Northern California, Southern Oregon is still way down on the percentiles, less than 25% of the average precip during these years has fallen over California. So we've gotten a lot recently and that's great, but the deficit since 2020 is still, is still, it remains over 20 inches in parts of Northern California. That's hard to wrap our brains around. It's so much water recently but that's a huge deficit to overcome. As far as snowpack, well, the atmospheric river events have helped the Sierras, absolutely. Uh, the Great Basin here has had some great snowfall as well. But you go to the north, so the Cascades into the northern Rockies and down into the Tetons, yeah, we're doing okay. We're within the ballpark of average, but we could use some more snowfall there. If you're looking for Colorado-specific information, head to weather5280.com. Just published the latest article on this water situation there. So let's take a look at a number of reservoirs. Okay, so Shasta Lake, that one is right at the normal. Upper Klamath Lake, right at the normal. Then you get up to the north, and some of these reservoirs just aren't quite there, like the Yakima system, just barely below the average. The Boise system is hovering right around average. We have the Upper Snake system, which is pointed down in here. Uh, that's below average. You look at Bighorn Lake in Montana, it's right at the average. Pueblo Dam in Colorado, at the average. But then look down in here. This is going to be our focus for this video. Elephant Butte Reservoir, way down on the list, 33% of average. Lake Powell, way down on the list. Lake Mead, way down on the list. So we've got some reservoirs out there that need a lot of work. But what about the good side of it? Let's take a look at some of the Sierras. These are the reservoirs represented here throughout the Sierras. And the kind of the normal reservoir storage, storage would be this thick blue area. Where have we been this year? We've been normally kind of drier than that normal going into the new year. And then once we hit January, got these atmospheric river events going and see this lighter blue line start to climb up. So now we're nearing a normal reservoir storage, that's the liquid water sitting in those reservoirs, is now back to about average. But we have a lot of snow that's yet to melt and to contribute, and that's represented here. So this is the reservoir plus the snowpack yet to melt and move into the reservoirs. And that's this trajectory right here. Notice how that, as of today, is already a high, higher than what we would consider normal for the whole system. So that's great. So we do have some advantageous areas, some good water supply stories. But where we're still lacking is in most of the Colorado River system. The Sierras don't flow into the Colorado River system. That water does not move that way. So for the Colorado River system, we still need a lot of help. We're back to Lake Mead, and this is the chart of what would be kind of the relative normal range. So normal sits right in here. But this year we are way down here, and this is including all the recent contributions. It's come up ever so slightly, so we've added some water, but it's still historically low. Last year's line is right here. So again, to get to normal, we have to be way up here, but this year's trajectory for Lake Mead still historically low, despite the atmospheric river event. Now let's go to Lake Powell. Again, 38% of the average so far, it's like Lake Mead. It's way down on the list. 
it's lower than it was last year to get to normal you got to get way up here so these are the major reservoirs in the colorado river system and there's just not a lot of storage there it's still a water issue now let's turn to the forecast we do have some moisture on the way during the course of the week and some moisture for the west but it's a far cry from that atmospheric river event we have a swath of snow and i'll pinpoint that in a moment but down toward the south and east that's where the bigger totals are going to be coming from three to four inches from jackson to monroe up to memphis tupelo columbia nashville just south of lexington and south of louisville into Knoxville, we have three to four inches of total rainfall on the way. So we've shifted the bullseye from the west to the southeast as far as big rainfall. Well, central and northern Rockies, we have snow on the way. So south of Billings, uh, you get close to Jackson Hole and the Tetons, you get south of Bozeman, you get north of Missoula, those areas are gonna pick up 12 to 24 inches. And that's just over the next three days. So that's gonna be a good boost to the snowpack numbers in that area. But as you look down towards Salt Lake, uh, Denver and southward to feed the Colorado River system. There's very little snowfall on the way. Let's look out two weeks. Do we have a boost in these atmospheric rivers coming our way? Start off with impactful snow areas from the 2nd through the 8th, northern central Rockies down into parts of Colorado, but we don't get farther south than that for the, the risk of heaviest snowfall. The Sierras and the Cascades, more heavy snowfall is possible. As far as total precip from Seattle, Portland down to Sacramento, there is a slight chance we'll see the atmospheric rivers try to kick in again. But honestly, right now, the data doesn't look all that convincing on spreading super heavy water that way. Big story for the 2nd to the 8th is going to be the cold cold. I've kind of highlighted all the areas pretty much covering the whole country from a slight risk of being cold to moderate and high risks. Certainly the high plains into the central plains, parts of Colorado, off into Kansas, Missouri, and all points northward will be very, very cold. And again, that's as we kick off February. That goes from the 2nd through the 8th. So there you have it. There's your daily shower. And again, it's a video about grabbing the headlines. We ran through reservoir storage. Still need a lot of water in that Colorado River system, but there's been some bonus uh, spikes in some of the reservoirs there in the Sierras. As far as the next two weeks, cold is the biggest headline coming our way. We'll also have some areas of heavy snow and heavy precip, but it's cold. That'll be the talking point in the next video.